Remember, there are no rules in cooking. Taste this. All right, today we're going to get started uh, on today's show. I thought by getting some, some vegetables involved and, of course, some skirt steak with uh, one of my famous rubs, we're also going to put a little popcorn in there, give it that crunch, that corn flavor. Now, uh, let's talk about what we have going on here for the steak first, really, before we start to get into uh, any kind of vegetables. Now, we have here a skirt steak, and, a flat, and the skirt steak pretty much comes folded up. But if, if you lift it up, that's how it looks. Now, skirt steak is, is one of those steaks that I love. Uh, it's not that fatty, but it's really flavorful. Uh, it really is. And it's used in a lot of Tex-Mex, um, Spanish dishes, uh, Latin dishes. Uh, there's even a couple of Italian braised dishes uh, in Sicily that use skirt steak. Uh, but anyway, it's a great steak, especially with a dry rub and stuff like that, putting it right on the grill. You know, there's really an easy way to... Take a steak and put a dry rub on it if, you, if your space is limited like today because we've got a lot of stuff going on here. But we're going to take our skirt steak and just put it right in our bag. We're going to lose this unless we wipe it with a sanitary towel. Take our plate, put it in the back. Now let's talk about what we're going to dry rub this steak with. Now in the back here, I have a whole bunch of uh, dry rubs. I'm going to bring to the front. And this is like my standard dry rub type of selection here. There are many other dry rubs, but only this shines. Now, this is my private stash here. It's, it's a little bit of crushed red pepper, a little bit of cumin seed, fresh thyme, coriander, celery root, celery salt, dried ginger, and that goes in there like that. So that's, that's like my standard base rub, just to kind of take it to the next level. Then I have a little bit of turmeric, a little bit of cayenne pepper, a little bit of Old Bay seasoning. I put that in there. Then I have straight oregano. And this is uh, just a standard garlic powder. Now, I add a little bit of soy sauce uh, to my rubs. Now, I know I mentioned this was going to be a dry rub, but uh, for everything to kind of adhere and stick to the meat, I like to add just a little bit of soy sauce that kind of brings the life together, really takes the flavor to the next level. And, of course, we can't forget just a little bit of olive oil to balance it out. The olive oil will help it sear, get some nice flavor. You know, when you put it on the grill, it's not going to burn because you have the, uh, you know, all these herbs, these dry herbs and stuff like that. So you close the bag up and just kind of move it around with, with your hands. This is the easiest way to talk about, uh, you know, not making a mess. All right? Now, you don't see any blood anywhere, any cross-contamination. It's all in the bag, right? Just make sure that you open up the skirt steak, because keep in mind it was kind of folded. So that's about what it's going to look like, folks, right? So we're going to open it up, and right away, wow, oof, I wish I could invite you on here to the set to smell this. The aroma is incredible. If I open up the steak, I'm sure the camera guy can get a, a shot of that, uh, you see that that little bit of soy sauce really caked it, caked it right to the meat, and it gave it great flavor. So, what we're going to do is take our skirt steak, we're going to put it down, and let it do its, do its thing, cook. Get all nicey-nice on us. And we've got a little piece over here that we had. Okay. We've got our sanitary towel down here. We're just going to wipe this. Don't want any cross-contamination. And now, while that's cooking, we're ready to talk about our vegetables. Now, vegetables are something that are true and dear to me, but they have to be cooked the right way, otherwise I don't like them. Like, one of the things I can't stand is when you go into a restaurant and they, and they don't know that these two things have two separate cooking times. Um, they just throw the carrots in there with this. Next thing you know, you get mushy zucchini and a still al dente carrot. So what we're going to do is take you through each phase of this. I'm going to put everything in this one pan, but I'm going to try to kind of um, really pre-cook everything we need to so it cooks all at the same time. So let's start with the carrots. We don't need all these carrots. And let's go over everything that we have here. We have baby root carrots. Next you have our zucchini, our Harry Covers. We have our cauliflower. We have a pearl onion. We have our garlic. Our beets today we're not going to use. I just kind of bought it because it looked good. And then we have our small colorful uh, potatoes here. First thing we're going to do with these carrots is drop them in hot water. Now. The thing about cleaning carrots, especially when they're this small, is you don't want to take a peeler because obviously you won't have anything, you know, left by the time you're done cleaning the outside. 
So the, the whole point of it is to drop it into hot water, and then with a towel, you're supposed to scrape the skin. I'm going to show you that method in just a moment here. Uh, while I'm doing that, let's talk about some of the other stuff here. You grab yourself a paring knife, and you're just going to cut down your zucchini. I'm going to leave that. I'm going to clean up all these vegetables and leave them on the side right now. Now, the haricot fairs are something that uh, are really good, but they're a pain in the neck to clean. But if you take the effort to, uh, to do it, it's going to be worth your while. We're going to take our carrots. I want to show you this real quick. Now, as you can see, we only put these carrots in here for just a few moments. And while they're hot is when we're going to clean them. So let me just take one carrot. I'm going to show you. Now imagine doing like 2,000 of these things in the restaurant business years ago. Now with your, your rag, what I'm going to do is just pull the skin. Do you see that? Now you lose absolutely no carrot. You're just losing the skin. Now this could have probably went for a couple of more minutes, but I like the carrots al dente. So take yourself a clean rag, folks. And actually, I like to leave the carrot top on there. I think it looks nice. Okay, now you have a completely clean carrot and you didn't have to peel it. Let's do it for the others here as well. All right, so we're just about done. All right, so we got four carrots. Now, what we're going to be doing is talk about some of the other stuff we have here. Because the Harry Covers or the small string beans, whatever you want to call them, have to go into the water too. So, what I like to do on both of these sides is snip the front end and the back because I, I don't want, some people leave this kind of hanging out there. I just think it's more neat. I don't want to be biting down on this little thing here. It's just, it's not clean. So what I'll do is I'll just snip it and I end up with that. Now the Harry Colveros or your string beans, whatever you want to call them, have to go down in the water together. Don't like start to snip three, drop it, go back, snip another three, drop it again because, again, the cook time is going to be off. Very important. When you're cooking vegetables, the cook time has to be even. It takes some time. And it's a pain in the neck. And if you don't have any patience, it's probably not going to be for you. But uh, I assure you, you're going to get a, an incredible product. So this is what we're going to be using, going right, right into the hot water. And this is very, very lightly salted water, nothing crazy. Okay. Let's look what we have here. We have cauliflower. Now, cauliflower, <coughs> these baby cauliflowers, I'm not going to uh, blanch them at all. You could. What I'll show you exactly what I like to do with these things. Clean them up real nice. And then right in half is how they're going to go down, like that. And you're going to get the caramelization of the uh, vegetables. You're really going to take it to the – because I, I don't believe in poaching the vegetables unless you have to, like carrots, this, stuff like that. Anything else should not go in the water. Our beans are ready to go. See how nice color they look now? There was a, a chef years ago. Uh, his name was Vincent. And he used to tell me put a little baking uh, soda into the, uh, into the water. And it would brighten up the color of the vegetables. But you have to watch out because if you put too much, uh, they become mush and bland. But that was a good trick to get the, the, the vegetables to really shine out. Um, all right, let's take uh, a white cauliflower too. Same thing, right? Right over here. Okay, so now we're moving here. Take a pearl onion. You always have to have an onion in the bunch. We're just going to cut down this onion right down the middle. Next, we're going to take some potatoes, and they're going to go in half too. Got some purple. I remember somebody said, could you really eat a purple potato? Yeah, same thing. Same thing as white. Really don't, there's, no, there's no taste difference. And we'll get a red. We don't, and again, we don't get, get too crazy. We're not going to do anything with the beets. All right, so what I'm going to do is just move all this on a plate. Now, all these vegetables, folks, are going to go into this pan. Now, this pan's been pretty, you know, hot for a while. We're going to take a piece of garlic. What a nice big, this is called elephant garlic. It's pretty big. Um, and I'm going to take one piece. I'm going to take it with your hand. You've seen this before on other shows. That's how I take the garlic uh, out of the shell. And what we're going to do is give a slice down to the garlic, just like this. And we're going to put the garlic cut side down. So let's start to do this. A little bit of olive oil in this baby. Woo, here we go. Back away. 
right? We got the garlic down in the middle. Now, if you notice, right away you get that aroma, right? I'll leave the butter here. We're going to take the cauliflower, put it down like this. Now, we're not going to raise the heat. It's on low. And you got to work quick here because, you know, remember, everything's cooking the same time here. We've got our zucchini down. Smells good already. It's the only way I like my vegetables. Put your potatoes down here. You're going to see we all got the same cook time here. Put your onions down. Now your carrots, cut a couple of those babies in half like that. Otherwise, they're never going to get soft. Carrots down too. A little, Harry Colbert's can go right in there. It's like that. Now you take your butter, put it right in the center, turn it up. going to move this aside. Now we're going to talk about this steak. Let's flip it over because that's just about finished. All right, we're going to take our plate here. Okay, got our plate. Now this is looking good. As you can see now, we're getting all the oils. They're cooking. I raised the temperature of this to really be nice and high. We got a little bit of pepper. Always fresh. There you go. None of that canned pepper stuff. Losing its flavor. And salt. And I mentioned that, that we weren't going to do this until the very end. Now we're ready to go. This is heating up. You got a little bit of olive oil in there. You put the butter. So the olive oil will help in the butter turning brown. We don't want that. But at the same time, you'll see the incredible flavor cooking on this. And what we want, not necessarily to turn it over and cook it like a steak, but we want a nice charred brown flavor on one side. Uh, that'll complement the steak nicely. So what we're going to do is cut only a small piece of the steak. Going to put the steak down like this. Now, you could start to slice the steak on a bias, if you'd like, in the pan. It's fine, in the dish, rather. Okay, these vegetables are going on top. You can see this is a perfect mid-rare. That's how I like my skirt steak, so you get some flavor in there. Okay, now, take a look at this. You see the color in this? Nothing's overcooked. Everything's moving along nicely. We're going to garnish this with a little bit of microgreens that we have here. We have nasturtium leaf. You know those edible flowers? This is the leaf that's on there. These are going to be really nice. And we also have... Shonkiku microgreens as well. And what I've done was sprinkle just a little bit of citrus sauce on here. And I did it the right amount of time because you don't want this to wilt too much. So you can see a little bit of the lime uh, juice that I put on there. Now we're just going to give this a little bit of a toss. So we don't have much more time on this. And then while this is cooking, I'm going to talk about this cheese plate that we're going to be doing next. Okay, so now we're going to take this steak. We're going to put it over here. Looking nice and love, love. Now, we're going to talk about cheese dish. Now, people, many people write into this show. Believe it or not, we do have some fans that actually watch this show. And we've had a couple of fans ask me about a cheese plate. And cheese plate could be so difficult to explain because there really is so many components to the dish. Um, you know, between what's sweet, what's sour, what fruit should go with it, what spice is not overpowering and everything like that. So it's, it's really not a simple email to send back. So what I've decided to do is bring some cheeses on here uh, and talk about what we got going on. Now, we have a couple of cheeses that we're going to get started with. One being our smoked Swiss cheese, which we're going to open this up, get it out of the packet. And we also have a cheddar goat cheese. Now, let me say that again. Cheddar goat cheese, because you don't hear that much. Okay, we're going to get this out of the packet. We're going to leave that down there. Those two cheeses are going to be perfect for what we're doing here. I want to get this dish out of the way first. So I just want to kind of explain to you what we got going on here. Real quick, let's just jump back for this a second. Take a look at this. I'm going to start flipping stuff over, and you're going to see how brown it is, right? Okay, I'm not going to do this to everyone because I'd be crazy and I, to, to sit here all day and do this. 
Now, I just want to show you everything gets brown. What we do is we cut off the fire and then give everything a toss. Okay, we're done. Finished. That's it. It's over. Okay, so take this back for just a moment. Take, pull this back over here. Now we can talk about putting the vegetables on top. Wow. So you don't get that with, with, with your cauliflower when, you, when you're doing other stuff like boiling it and, and just some unnecessary killing of these vegetables. This is the real way to eat vegetables. If you're going to come in, look how that carrot comes out. This is the way to do it. It takes a little bit of time, but hey, you're going to have to eat these vegetables anyway, so you might as well do them right. Look at how that onion comes out. And don't forget that garlic. We got that garlic over there. That's really going to give it huge amounts of flavor. We got the right amount of salt on this too. And this is kind of how I like to eat my steak. I'm not too crazy with, you know, making sure that we got a heavy sauce on there or let me have a dipping sauce for the steak. Put some veg, uh, string beans on top. And then what I like to do is take this oil, it's nice vegetable oil, just put it over the top there. That's what I like for my sauce. And then what we'll do is we'll take some of these greens, put a few on top. Now our citrus green goes on, on the top like that. Okay, now the last thing we're going to do is take some of this popcorn. <clears throat> and we have a lot of nice oils in here, some nice flavor. We're going to put it all over the popcorn. Now what would be the difference if I had regular corn in here or popcorn? Nothing, except that I'll tell you that the regular popcorn could add, a, a, the regular corn rather, can add a bit of an annoying texture a little bit. This has a crunch and it has flavor. What we're going to do is just put it around here like this. Now it absorbs the flavor of everything. Gives it an extra crunch. Okay, that's going to be it for this dish. We're going to get cleaned up. I'm going to show you a, a very easy, incredible flavored cheese plate. So don't go anywhere. Taste this. Now for the second cheese dish, you know, you, when you're talking about cheese plates and stuff like that, a lot of things have to happen. Fruit. Uh, well, what, what fruit goes well with cheese? Definitely apples and pears, you know, but not just any pear, Asian pear. Now, the Asian pear is really good. It, uh, it, it's, it's, a, it's a bit of a different texture. Uh, I'm trying to explain like a water chestnut texture, but really sweet, not as dense. Um, definitely check them out. You can find them pretty much uh, everywhere at, at, at markets these days. It's not difficult to find it. But what we're going to do is take our Asian pear. Uh, and one thing I like about it, it doesn't oxidize as much as the other one when you leave it out. So the first thing we're going to do is take our pear. Now they really absorb the flavor of, of cheese very nicely. So we're going to start off with our first section here. So now we're going to say to ourselves, well, what cheese goes great? Now cheddar goat cheese goes really well with this pear. So that's going to be our neutral, is, our, is going to be our, our Asian pear here today. We're going to take two decent sized pieces and we're going to put them here. When I do a cheese plate I like to kind of go down down the list here so you're going to take a piece of pear, you're going to take a piece of cheese because people need direction when, when, they're, when they're trying something that they normally uh, have not had before. Um, this is incredible. All right, now Looking at it you would never know what this is. This is popcorn and Swiss cheese. It's got an incredible buttery flavor uh, with the cheese as well. What I'm going to do is Cut this. What you have to do is make this. You have to take your popcorn, put it on a pan, put the Swiss cheese on it, and bake it in the oven, and then use it um, a few hours later so you kind of get the full feel when the cheese is kind of hardened up a little bit. And what we're going to do is put these popcorn Swiss cheese uh, slash toast points right there. Now what we're going to do is grab our other cheese. This is a smoked cheese. And it's not like a, a, you know, some smoked cheeses you can just taste it was dipped in smoked liquid and then colored on the outside. This is definitely a smoked Swiss cheese. It was truly smoked. Uh, smoking cheese is really an art. I've seen people do it, especially uh, smoked fresh mozzarella. It's probably the best smoked cheese I've ever had in my life. If it's really done right, and you can actually see the person doing it. 
All right, let's go ahead and get uh, some more Asian pear. Okay. Now the other side. And we're going to go with the smoked cheese. Now, on this side, what we're going to do is take a little bit of uh, raspberry coulis. I've made this myself. Now, I take raspberries. You know, I wish this show was an hour, hour and a half. I could really show you everything that I make, but it, it just takes so much time. This is, this is, these are raspberries. So you take raspberries real quick. You boil them down with a little bit of framboise, and then what you do is take a little bit of port wine. You really boil the heck out of that down. You take a little bit of pectin at the end. You put it in. You let it sit, and it becomes a, a, a thick kind of, not jelly consistency, but I'll show you what I'm ready to do here. I'm ready to smear that down. And that's exactly what we're looking for. Now this right here will go great with just about everything on the plate because it's got that port wine in it. And you need, you need sort of that wine flavor on here. Next, berries are always a good thing too. I love blueberries. Blueberries with any kind of cheese is nice too because it's got a sweet kind of burst flavor. Some of them are sour sometimes, which will help cut through the cheese. And then we have dried blueberries as well. You've heard dried figs. They work the same way. So we're going to put that as well. Now, we're going to take our next thing, which is tomatoes. And these aren't just any tomatoes. These are heirloom tomatoes. You can see by the color and by the flavor. And if you notice, take a look at this tomato here. This is ready to burst. I, there's no hard tomatoes here. So put that down like that. Next, we're going to take a little piece of watermelon. We're going to hollow out the center. We're going to dry the center like that. We're going to put that there. We saved that for last. I'll show you what we're going to do. We have a little bit of this combination of turmeric, coriander. We're just going to put that on the bottom there that you can dip your cheese with. We're going to take a little bit of balsamic vinegar. Now you can use aged balsamic vinegar, which is much thicker, or you can use this. It's fine. Put a little bit of that in there. And balsamic and watermelon is incredible. Now you take your plate, you're going to garnish it a little bit. These are fennel ferns. Again, everything we use complements the flavor of these dishes. And then we have red scallions, which are going to be perfect with this. Good flavor, good color. This is what we're looking for here, folks. And we're going to put these throughout to give your guests the opportunity that they can dip in. So here's, here's my definition of a cheese plate. You don't see a ton of crackers. You don't see a ton of bread. You want that, we'll make a, bottle, uh, a big pot of fondue there with some, with some white wine and some gruyere. This is a cheese plate. Everything complements each other. Thank you for watching today's show. I'm Chef Joseph, and I remember there are no rules in cooking. Taste this.